Welcome to MacGyver's Workshop, where you never know what we're going to be working on next. If you're not too careful, you just might learn something. Hi there. Welcome back to another episode of MacGyver's Workshop, where you never know what we're going to be working on next, and if you're not too careful, you just might learn something. Now, today we're working on a 2004 Chevrolet Suburban, and this one's got the Vortec motor in it, and it belongs to a good friend of mine named Brandon. Going out here, and rumor has it, okay, that he may or may not be, but this can't be confirmed or denied, associated loosely with a podcast, non-family friendly podcast, I might add. Yeah, I probably wouldn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> called Admit It Willingly. Check it out on iTunes if you're of, uh, not of weak constitution or extreme religious uh, integrity. So, yeah. did I say it was not family friendly? You should be of age. Yes. Yeah, please. So, but it's humor, it's sarcasm, it's everything everybody wants to say but is too politically correct to say. And we will blow your minds if you listen to <laughs> I'm, free. I'm scared to listen to it, <laughs> yeah. so if that tells you anything. All right, Brandon, what's, uh, what's going on with your ride? Well, tell our viewers. When I bought the vehicle, it had a small little oil drip, and it appears that it's been getting worse over time. And it really scared me this past week. I had to put about a quart and a half oil in it. Mm. And that's the first time I've had to do that in a few months that I've owned it. So we can basically assume that this has been a progressively getting worse thing. For me, it has, yes. So that's a clue. And I have not been able to find out where it's coming from. Well, that's where, that's where having, a, having a lift comes in great handy. Having a good friend. <laughs> so, uh, what I've done here is, uh, yesterday, I asked him uh, in his travels to pick up a bottle of fluorescent dye that uh, you put in your oil. And given the amount of oil that he says it's losing, and the driving that he's done between yesterday and today, we should be able to get an indication with the uh, UV light. So let's get this puppy up in the air. All right, cool. All right, Brandon, take her up. Okay, I'm not going to shoot with any uh, additional lighting because we want to be able to see the, the UV light. Now, I'm going to zoom in real close here. And I'm not sure how well that's showing up, but that's all green, which tells me a fluorescent green under the UV light, which is the dye is uh, showing where the uh, oil is leaking. And this is only from within one day, so. But here's the trick. If we follow it up, it goes all the way up the side of the engine block there. So that leads me to believe that at the very least, we have something leaking up at the top end of the motor and possibly running down around the bell housing here because we have a similar pattern on the other side. So. That could be one of two things. That could either be the oil pressure sending unit, which is in the middle at the back of the engine block at the top, or it could be um, it could be the uh, intake gasket where it comes across the center of the valley. Could possibly be a valve cover, but I don't think so because I'm not seeing anything on the back of the cylinder heads. They're dry. If it was a valve cover, they'd be wet. So, let's set her down and it's going to be a bit hinky me trying to get the camera in there in the back of that motor, but we'll see what we can do. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look back behind this motor here and see what we can see. Um, now, what I'm going to use is kind of a, what they can refer to as a bore scope. And uh, uh, it's basically just a tiny little camera with a little screen so we can see where 
my fat behind can't get. And I don't feel so bad because he was oofing and uffing when he was trying to get up over the top of the hood of this thing anyway. So, we'll take a look down here. I'm pretty much on the oil pressure, ah, crap, the oil pressure sending unit. And it appears to be dry. However, everything around it is pretty wet. Um, and we're seeing some telltale green from the dye. The dye itself is green, so it tints the oil green a bit. And then we're going to, uh, let me see if I can get over here where I really saw a lot of oil, oily residue. And that is right here. If I can get to it a little better, come on. Come on, let me get at it. There we go. That's a connector at the back of the motor. If my memory serves me correctly, uh, I think that goes to like the knock sensors and everything that are down in the lifter valley. Um, and you can see there's a lot of oil caked on there really bad. So my guess is, is that's probably where our leak is coming from. And it's running ah, out the back of the motor and down the bell housing. So you can see it's really, really wet there. You can really get up close. This camera's really good. And you can see all the, all the wet oil there. So, I'm going to call it, that's where his oils, oil is leaking from. There's still a possibility it could have a rear main seal leak, but this is a lot easier to fix first <laughs> than pulling a transmission. So, uh, But we know we've got some measurable oil coming out of here, so uh, this is not a project we're going to undertake in this video, but maybe another weekend project where he, uh, he'll spend the afternoon with us and we'll pull the intake off and get down in there and get that uh, valley pan gasket changed. Alright, I'm going to sit here and move my, my stage lighting out of the way. Thank you Daddy Tech Ant by the way. That was a present from him, fellow YouTuber. Now, I'm going to clarify something here. Uh, I referred to this engine as a Vortec earlier. Uh, this is actually, I mean, it's got Vortec on there, but this is actually from the LS family of engines. Uh, you know, back in my day when dinosaurs roamed the earth, the original Vortec was actually a small block Chevy, and uh, uh, an evolution of the small block Chevy, that, you know, old school 70s, early 80s. But uh, this is actually what's called an LS motor, and it's the 5.3. Uh, they refer to it as the Vortec in the trucks. Uh, got a little different cam, different heads, makes more torque than, say, if it's 5.3 was in a car. But uh, it's got to pull the 6,000 pound Suburban around, you know, so, uh, you know, it's their, their truck motor, so. And then, if you really want to suck gas, then you get the six liter, and that will pull whatever you want to pull. But you know, it won't pass a gas station. I, get, I had an 04 uh, 2500 HD with a six liter in it, and uh, it got 10 miles to the gallon no matter what you did. With it. I could pull a full, fully loaded, you know, 24 foot horse trailer, and it still got 10 miles to the gallon. Drive it down the road empty, and it still got 10 miles to the gallon no matter how you drove it. Anyway. So, that's pretty much it for finding an oil leak. Uh, the tool that I used, uh, this Borescope, uh, mine is a, a Milwaukee brand. I actually got it at uh, uh, was Home Depot, was uh, where we got it from. They had it on sale a couple of Christmases ago. Um, they're not terribly expensive. As you can see, it's worth its weight in gold. And, uh, you know, for getting into places, you run that down through a spark plug hole and see what see what the top of the piston looks like. So, uh, anyway, 
So the next uh, the next step in this repair will be uh, pulling the intake and off of this motor and getting those gaskets uh, swapped out and cleaned up. Uh, we were going to possibly hose the engine down. Uh, we may still do that. He's got his little pressure washer out here, but I don't think that's going to tell us anything at this point since we've pretty much got our smoking gun back there, or at least part of it. So we know that's leaking. We know we've got to fix that. So anyway, hope you learned something. Thank you for watching. Click subscribe. And if you want to know when I post another video, click the little bell icon. And you can always email me at MacGyver's Workshop at gmail.com. See ya.